Welcome back to Anton Math. Now in the last video I introduced a conditional statement. Given two propositions P and Q, we say that P implies Q is our conditional statement. So let's look at P implies Q. Now associated with this conditional statement, and this is going to be what I talk about mostly in this video, uh, we have two other statements that kind of come from this. One is called the converse. The converse of the statement P, impl P implies Q converse is Q implies P. All right, we call this the converse of this statement. Given that P implies Q, the converse is Q implies P. And we have something else called the contrapositive. Right, and the contrapositive is the statement not Q implies not P. Okay, this is called the contrapositive. So it's kind of like the converse, but I'm negating both of my propositions Q and P. And to illustrate this, I've, I've written up a little example, just so we can get an idea of what I mean here. If I have some conditional statement P implies Q, my statement here I chose is it's raining so there are clouds in the sky, right? It's raining is my P, and there are clouds in the sky is my Q, isn't it? And this is true. It's raining, so there are clouds in the sky. This is a true conditional statement, right? So now I want to look at the truth of my converse and my contrapositive. Looking at my converse, that would be the same as saying there are clouds in the sky, so it's raining, right? Now right away, we know that this isn't necessarily true, is it? it's possible to have clouds in the sky and have it not be raining, right? This is that third line in our truth table for a conditional statement where the first proposition is true and the second one is false. This is the only case where this conditional statement is false, right? So we see right away that a conditional statement and its converse are not necessarily the same. Now, of course, with some conditional statements, the converse might also be true, like it's daytime, and uh, it's uh, not nighttime, <laughs> or something like that, right? We can get a tautology so that these are always true. And in the next video, we'll talk about the special cases where these are both true. We call those biconditional statements. Um, but coming back, the contrapositive in this case would be not Q implies not P, or in other words, there are no clouds in the sky, so it's not raining. Now we notice that in this case, the contrapositive is true. If there's no clouds in the sky, then it's not raining outside, right? That's a true statement. So in this example that I've given, P implies Q is the same as its contrapositive, and it's not the same as its converse. Now this right here, this is a huge trouble area for most people just starting out with logic. It makes a lot of sense in your mind if you have these two statements and one implies the other, it should make sense that they both imply each other, but that's not always the case. And this is a very, um, a very important thing to understand, right? If I have a statement that implies something else, that doesn't mean that the implication implies my original statement. Very, very common mistake. So let's look at this a little bit more deeply. We have a way of comparing statements right, that we've learned about, and that's our truth table, isn't it? We know that we can make a truth table here and actually compare all of these different statements. Now these are conditional statements, but conditional statements are themselves just propositions in the end. They have a well-defined true or false value. So let's look at a truth table here. Let's look at P, Q, and I want to look at the relationship between P implies Q its converse and its contrapositive. So I need P implies Q. I need the negation of Q, the negation of P, so that we can get my contrapositive, right? My converse, Q implies P, and my contrapositive, not Q, implies not P. Okay, so filling this in, I need to get my basic truth values for my two simple propositions. We're kind of used to this by now, right? Now P implies Q, we know that's true whenever P is false or Q is true, right? So I'm going to get true, true, false is the only case where this is false, true. Now not Q is going to be true when Q is false and false when Q is true. So this is just false, false, true, true. 
not p is going to be the opposite of p, so that's false true, false true. And we don't need these, right? We could figure out the contrapositive just by looking at the original statements, but it makes it a little bit easier, right, when we're dealing with the implication. So we can just use that definition from the previous video. Q implies P, that means Q is false or P is true. So looking back over here, P is true in the first and third rows, and Q is false in the last row, and this second one, I have Q is true and P is false. That's the only case where Q implies P is false. Okay, now before I make some comparisons, let's go ahead and finish this table. Not Q implies not P, so that means that not Q is false, so that's true in these first two cases or not p is true. So that's true in this last case and false in this third row, isn't it? Okay, so let's make some comparisons. We see right away that p implies q, let me change colors here, p implies q is not an equivalent statement to q implies p. Right? It's not equivalent. Remember, we defined two propositions to be equivalent if their truth values were exactly the same. But here, I have T and then F, whereas over here I have F and then T. Right? Both of these rows are different. Okay? So these are not equivalent statements in general. Now sometimes they are equivalent. If both P and Q are true and false, at the exact same times, there's never a case where one of them's false and the other one's true, then these statements are equivalent. And we'll talk about that case in the next video. That's called a biconditional statement. And it really just means P implies Q and Q implies P. Now the contrapositive, however, this is a very interesting case. Notice how I have true, true, false, true for P implies Q, and I have true, true, false, true for not Q implies not P. So a contrapositive statement is equivalent is equivalent to a conditional statement, right? Figuring out that this is true is the exact same thing as figuring out that this is true. They're equivalent. They're always true at the same time. Now, this is a very useful tool. This is specifically going to become useful when we talk about proofs by contraposition or using the contrapositive to prove something, right? Sometimes it's easier to say, well, let's assume that Q is false and then show that that means that P is false than to say, well, if P is true, then Q is true, okay? So in other words, let me kind of uh, put down what I just said. P implies Q is equivalent to the statement not Q implies not P, right? These are equivalent propositions. Um, or in other words, uh, I guess we could say something else. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to kind of nest some of these implications. Uh, this will be a little bit you can practice reading this so we can get used to these conditional statements, but I could say P implies Q implies that not Q implies not P and not Q implies not P in turn itself implies that P implies Q, right? And we'll get a shorthand for this in the next video, but I'm just using what we've learned to, uh, to get used to seeing this, right? Remember that an implication or a conditional statement is itself just a proposition. It has a true-false value. So we can have a conditional statement where each of the propositions being used, instead of using P and Q, I'm using these complex propositions, which are themselves conditional statements. So we can see how this logical notation can get pretty complicated pretty fast. So, you know, all these things we're learning about notation and, and all of these, uh, the rules from the end of the last section come in pretty handy. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk about the case when P implies Q and Q implies P. This is called a biconditional statement, and we'll see you there.